it's weird to hear Chester Bennington's voice. Jesus Christ, that's my childhood coming back. I didn't think I'd hear that for a long time. I'm gonna have to process that for a little while. What's up, all you cool hominids of the internet? Mark with Cardivox Academy here. And uh, yesterday, I woke up, poured myself a cup of coffee, opened up the interwebs, as I do as part of my morning ritual every day, saw YouTube, and what the heck did I see but a bunch of people reacting to a new Linkin Park song. And I said, what? How is this possible? Um, so... I've looked into it a little bit, and sure enough, uh, there is, a, as always, I'm late to the game. I'm always late to the game, but there is a new Linkin Park song. Now, I've heard a couple different things. Um, one is, for anybody who somehow this is their first Linkin Park song, I'd be very surprised, doesn't know their singer, Chester Bennington, unfortunately passed away. Um, I think, I can't remember exactly when, but it's been a while. And so that's part of the reason I was so surprised to see a new Linkin Park song. Now, I've heard that his voice was pieced together I should say I've read. I've read that his voice was pieced together from older takes. I've heard that this song was in the vault for a long time. And they're finally releasing it. Somebody told me that his voice was generated with AI. I don't really buy that. I haven't heard it yet, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've heard some conflicting information on where this has come from. And literally, like to go into this as blind and first time listen as possible, I, I literally have tried to stay as dumb as possible. So if it's in the video description, I purposefully am not reading it because I, I want to just experience it. Now, for anybody, if this is your first Cardivox Academy video, uh, I myself am a metal vocalist. I do more deathcore, death metal, stuff like that. And I'm a vocal coach myself. Uh, I teach people how to make sounds such as <laughs> safely and efficiently with all sorts of cool techniques for years to come. Um, and I'm in a band called Kardashev. We're on Metal Blade Records. And so when I do these videos, I always try to find something, uh, even if it's not a song that is personally to my taste, I always find something vocally to latch on to. Uh, now, that's not going to be the case here because I was in love with Linkin Park. Linkin Park was, as with many people my age, I'm 34, um, as with many people my age, Linkin Park was my favorite band for years, for years. And, uh, you know, when I, I learned that we weren't going to get any more Linkin Park music and even worse that, you know, Chester Bennington had had passed away some years ago. It was, you know, it was it was it was tough. It was a rough thing to hear. Um, and so, yeah, seeing this somehow new music coming out, that's really cool. So if you like the content, like, share, subscribe means a lot to me. Um, my apologies for my kind of hoarse sounding voice. I'm getting over being sick, uh, which means I won't be doing a lot of singing in this video. But that's that's good, because with these bigger bands, people don't want me to people don't want me to sing at all like not even like a playful scale if ever i if ever i'm just like oh that sounds like this note ah people are just like shut the fuck up so uh it's probably good it's probably for the best but anyways i'm really excited i'm doing this mostly because uh lincoln park was my favorite band for a very long time and i'm really excited to hear what this is uh yeah i probably forgot to say something but that's what i do forget stuff anyways all right so this is lincoln park lost here we go Okay, so uh, ha uh, after the first chorus is a cool 
is a cool place to a uh, good place to pause on this channel. We do pause and talk about vocal technique. So if you don't like that, you're in the wrong spot. Um, so man, it's weird. It's weird in a really good way um, to hear Chester Bennington's voice, especially in that chorus where he picks up with the grit. Uh, that's really cool. I have not heard. I didn't think I didn't think I'd hear that for a long time. Um, that's really cool. I don't really again. I'm not really sure how they put all these uh, vocals together, but that's really neat. God, that's like Jesus Christ. That's my childhood coming back. Um, wow, that was powerful and weird and I don't know. I'm gonna have to process that for a little while. But let's talk about his voice because that's why we're here. We're here to talk about his voice, right? So first and foremost, there are a couple things that Chester Bennington does that I think he does better than anybody else uh, who you know was singing then. And I think you know somebody on uh, the last Lincoln Park video I did, they mentioned that they think oh, I got a little dust on my shirt here. They mentioned that they think that Chester Bennington is one of the best like modern rock slash metal uh, singers of our time. And I think that that's true. I, I legitimately think that that's true. And <clears throat> part of the reason is because he's able to make his voice really iconic in a couple of ways. The first is that he can make notes that don't that they're not like actually very high. He can make them sound very bright and make them sound higher than they actually are by the use of uh, timbre, resonance uh, and, and tone control. So let me kind of qu qualify what I mean here um, in that section before the chorus. He hit a high note i think now i don't have like perfect pitch i can't just hear a pitch and know exactly what it is um but it sounded like it was probably around like d e4 right now for people such as me people with vocal anatomy like myself who tend to fall into the baritone, baritone category um that's not a very high note it's not it, it's it's one that like maybe if you're a brand new singer you may have to train into to be able to do it with a nice like a chest dominant sound um you know, it it may be that you have to train into it, but it's actually pretty easy to access. However, the way that he sings it, it sounds so crystal clear, so piercing, and it cuts through the mix beautifully. Now, the thing about this is oftentimes when singers will will have this like cut through the mix, some of it is is vocal production, right? And that's okay. That's there's nothing wrong about that or cheating about that. But there are tons of of videos live, and plenty of people have seen him live, where his voice was just as crystal and just as beautiful, and able to cut through the mix as well, uh, live as it is in studio recordings. So, that being said. How do we do that? What are some ways that we do that? Now, again, because I'm getting over being sick, you can hear the hoarseness in my voice. Um, I'm not going to be singing along. Also, like I said, I learned my lesson. Don't do that on really big bands. People get spicy. Um, but I will give you some sort of spoken voice examples. So one thing that we can play around with, we, we can play around with the concept of timbre. Now, uh, timbre is a, a, a way to think about timbre is a way to make the same note, the same pitch sound different, right? A lot of times when we're new singers, we think about our voice as being a note like, hey, I hit, you know, a C5. Good for you. Uh, I hit a C5. I hit a D3, whatever it may be, right? But our, our voice is a lot more than that. Our voice is the way that it resonates in our head, the direction that we're placing it, right? Placement's kind of a kind of a slippery term. Uh, it's the engagement of our vocal cords, right? Are they nice and fully connected? Are they a little loose and airy? Are we getting a more a softer tone? Are we getting a weightier tone? There's a lot that goes into a single note, right? And so what Chester does, what a lot of people who sing and rock and metal do, but what he does really, really well is he places his voice really far forward in his mask, really far forward in his mask. And sometimes people will refer to the mask as what's up here. Sometimes people will refer to the mask as more so like the mouth and nose. I like to think of it as anything that like a fighter pilot mask would cover. Or if you're me, a CPAP. <laughs> if you have sleep apnea, you're sleep anything your sleep apnea mask would cover, including like the cheekbones a little bit here. Um, Placing your voice there gives it an, an incredibly bright and incredibly forward tone. And you can actually feel that. You don't have to be like a really good singer to just feel resonance placement, right? If you can make funny noises, you can play with resonance placement. One really good way to do this is to just say the letter E kind of exaggerated. E, 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 E. You may feel a vibration on the roof of your mouth, um, in the bridge of your, I'm sorry, in the septum of your nose, in your cheekbones. E, 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 right? You may feel something like that. Then you can just say, ah, ah, ah. Now I'm lifting my soft palate. I'm opening space in that pharyngeal area back there, right? But you don't have to do any of that. Ah, ah, ah is a very naturally rounded vowel. E is a very naturally forward vowel. And so you can sing, you can use your voice in those different places, 
right? You can use your voice in those different places. So one way that people will train this is they'll over exaggerate the placement and then tone it back, right? They'll over exaggerate the placement and then they'll tone it back. So you can do like kind of a funny SpongeBob voice. Hey, hi, Squidward. <laughs> and then you can pull it back. Ha 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 yo. Oh, 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 I need some vocal rest. Holy crap. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know what I had, but it's <clears throat> it's not playing nice with me. Anyways, I know it's not the screaming technique. I've been doing it for 14 years. Um, anyways, so that's one of the things I really like about his voice. Um, let's keep going, though. There's there's more song to listen to and more for us to talk about. So let's keep going. I know this is going to annoy some people, but that's a really good example of what I'm talking about. Um, so he's going to start something. I don't remember the lyrics. He, he's going to start off and his tone's going to be a little darker. Oh, oh, oh. And then as he lifts, as he moves into something I received, I think is the lyrics. He's going to be less, less dark, more bright. So from oh, oh, ah, ah, oh, ah, 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 same pitch. I mean, he's moving pitch. He's intonating. He's singing. Right. But. Oh, uh, 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 oh, 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 uh, uh. We want to be careful when we do stuff like this, not to just pull our larynx down into our chest or to shove our larynx up into the top of our head. We can get a lot of uh, we can get a lot of tone placement. We can get a lot of resonance movement just from our lips, the placement of our jaw. And um, I'm sorry, the tongue, the placement of the jaw, the teeth and the position of the soft palate. We can do so much before we have to start messing around with the, the larynx. Let's go ahead and hear. I'm going to go back a little bit. Let's go ahead and I'll kind of point when it gets to the part I'm talking about. Darker. I will always be afraid of the damage I've received. Brighter. Broken promises they made. And how blindly I believed. I will never break away. Cause when I'm Dang, that, sh that song is short and sweet. So I thought about pausing, but the song had really good momentum and I didn't want to mess it up, right? But I, I do want to talk about a couple of things. So uh, yet again, we have a good example of how he takes notes that are not as high as they sound. Or uh, let me say this again. The notes he's singing, they're high. They, you know, they're, they're good notes. It's not a bad note, but he's making them sound so bright, so crystal, so clear. Um, when the grit comes in, I think the lyrics are, I, I, I don't remember. Um, when that grit comes in, which by the way, like some of the best grit, some of the best grit, just so like oftentimes people who have really pronounced grit, like you can hear every rattle. It also sounds a little bit floppy and flubby. And then people who have really like really clean, really even grit, you lose it, it smooths out a little too much. You know, you lose some of those individual pops and crackles. But with him, it's like TV static. Yet you can still hear every little pop, every little every little blip. Um, and like Chester Bennington grit is is so 
iconic for so many reasons. And, you know, some pe sometimes people like to try to pin it down. They're like, oh, that's Fry or that's False Chord. Um, oh, that's Glottal Compression, which I don't really love that term. I get how it's used and when explained properly, it makes sense. But like, <laughs> don't tell new singers to compress their glottis. They're going to take that the wrong way and they're going to take that way too far. <laughs> Trust me on that. Um, but the glottis, by the way, is the, this, the space of your vocal folds, right? Sometimes referred, sometimes referred to mostly as just the space between your vocal folds. Other times you'll see it referring to just the vocal folds, the space in between, and that area in general, right? Um, but anyway, I think when it comes here, and I'm not to totally not trying to make a Linkin Park pun, I think when it comes to this, we're getting more into like the sort of hybrid territory. Like we've probably got some Fry influence in there, of course, which Fry, one thing many of my students tell me, and I, I resonate with this, is Fry is kind of a hard term to pin down because a lot of the times uh, it changes every month and you'll see a new post on Reddit or some other forum where somebody's like, no, this is the true Fry. And it's like a totally different technique. So it can be hard for people to pin down. Um, <clears throat> but we also sometimes have those, those super glottal tissues that we hear in false chord uh, screams rattling around as well, right? So I think we're we're getting more so into some hybrid territory here. But anyways, um, yeah, so I think he, he sounds like he's around maybe like a like a G or an A, G or an A, right? Um, which that note, again, for somebody such as myself with vocal anatomy like mine, that's going to be a note that you you may have to train to to be able to hit again in a in a in a chest dominant sound, like a CT dominant sound, right? Um, but it's totally a doable. It's totally doable. Not not that hard. Um, but the way he hits it with such accuracy, such precision, the tone is absolutely beautiful. And he's also got this buttery yet powerful distortion, this grit going on with it that cuts through the mix perfectly. That's really impressive. That's where it, that's the tricky stuff. The notes easy. All the stuff he does to make it sound beautiful. That's that's the talent, and that's where that comes in. And you know, we never thought we would hear. We never thought we would hear his his voice doing those notes again. Um, and so this is really cool. This is a very, very cool experience. Um, another thing he does throughout this song that I think is really cool is, you know, Chester does good storytelling with his voice. Um, Chester does good storytelling with his voice. And like, what does that mean exactly? Right. I think sometimes when we talk about vocalists doing storytelling, we think about the lyrics. And that totally makes sense because stories are made of words. Right. But I think also, um, when we talk about storytelling, we, we're talking about conveying emotion, right? We're talking about conveying uh, feeling and, you know, not being maybe like too on the nose, too heavy handed, right? And there are certain sections in here where he lets his voice very deftly crack and break. Um, there are sections where he's talking about, like, again, I don't remember the lyrics the first time I heard it, but like, I'm confused. And he lets his voice get a little, a little heavier, a little darker um, when he's to that chorus. And he's like talking about being behind his own illusion and like realizing the things that are going on. Now his voice has a lot more power and it's a lot brighter and a lot more forward. But at no point is he like, oh, I'll sound sad at the sad part or I'll sound happy at the happy part. Like it's a little bit more nuanced than that. And he does that really well with tone. He does that really well with uh, the timbre, the darkening, the brightening of his voice. And by letting his voice at times be a little bit breathier, a little bit more connected, a little bit breathier, a little bit more connected. So I think that, you know, if anybody's looking to be a singer like Chester, Obviously, step one, focus on your fundamentals, work on your chest voice first, find your comfort zone, that tessitura and speak on pitch. And then when you feel comfortable with that, play around with cool tones. And then once you've got that down, you know, focus on focus on storytelling, focus on conveying emotion without sounding overly emotional. Uh, and you can again, you can do that with brightness, uh, um, the color of your tone, breathiness, non breathiness. Uh, but don't try to be the next Chester Bennington soon because it's going to be hard um, and he's kind of got a legacy for a reason. But beyond that, um, again, because this song is a little bit out of my purview, I'm mostly doing like death core and death metal and things like that on the channel. A little bit shorter of a video because I have a little bit less uh, technique technique talk to give you. But uh, oh, one of the most important things I wanted to say. None of the brightness that you hear in this space was achieved by squeezing the vocal folds. None. Okay. Our tongue is such a powerful, such a powerful resonance control system, right? I oh, it shifts our vowels, sure, but also shifts our it also shifts our resonance. So if you want to get brighter, start with the tongue, the jaw, the lips, the soft palate, the pharyngeal space. If you want to get darker, same thing, right? 
the the reliance on squeezing the vocal folds is basically like not something you need to do. You'll see sometimes people use that technique out there. They're doing them good for them. I'm not saying that sometimes we don't need to lean onto like the vocal cords a little bit, but like pushing them together and you know that heavily pressed phonation that you hear sometimes don't need it. Um, that's a hot take, by the way. You'll you'll see people who disagree with me on that, and then shop around and make your own decision. There you go. But beyond that, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. We do have a really cool community uh, accessible through our Patreon. Uh, we've got tons of members. It's a lot of fun. We do events all throughout the week. Most of them are hosted by my uh, business partner, Alex, who is an absolute charmer and full of more spicy and hot takes than myself. And he's British, so it's fun to listen to. Um, but uh, me having a five-month-old, I'm my evenings are shot. Uh, but I pop in when I can. But again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all very much. Uh, and as always, uh, many thanks. Much love. I'm out. Time for a lozenge.